Lesson 1, The Delicious Duo Rice and Pasta Morning Anna, you know what we should do today? No, what's that? We should go grocery shopping and stock up on some rice and pasta. Rice and pasta? Why those two in particular? Because they're such a delicious and versatile duo when it comes to cooking. Ah, I see. They do make a great pairing. What kind of dishes can you make with them? Oh, the possibilities are endless. From hearty risottos to classic spaghetti, the options are limitless. MMM, that does sound appetizing. And they're both pretty affordable and easy to work with. Exactly. Plus, you can get so creative with all the different types of rice and pasta out there. That's true. I bet we could come up with some really tasty and unique meal ideas. Definitely. We should hit up the grocery store and browse the rice and pasta aisles for inspiration. Sounds like a plan. I'm getting hungry just thinking about all the delicious dishes we could whip up. Same here. And don't forget, rice and pasta make great bases for so many different cuisines. Good point. We could explore flavors from all over the world with those two staples. Exactly. From Italian to Asian to Latin American, the combinations are endless. I'm sold. Let's go stock up and then get creative in the kitchen. Awesome, this is gonna be fun. I can't wait to see what culinary masterpieces we come up with. Me neither. Lead the way to the rice and pasta aisle, Chef John. You got it, let's do this. Lesson 2, Streamlining Airport Security Hey Anna, I just got back from the airport and I have to say, the security process was so smooth this time. Really? That's unusual for airports these days. What do you think made it go so well? Well, I actually pre-checked a lot of the required information before I arrived. I think that made a big difference. Ah, uh, I see. Taking some proactive steps ahead of time. That's a great strategy. Absolutely. It allowed me to breeze through the security lines without any hassle. That's fantastic. Did you have to do anything special to get that pre-check done? Not really, I just made sure to register for the TSA pre-check program ahead of my trip. Ah uh, yes, that program can be a real game-changer for frequent flyers. Did you find the process to enroll straightforward? For the most part, yeah. There was a quick in-person appointment to get fingerprinted and verified, but it was pretty painless. That's good to hear. I've been meaning to look into that myself, as I travel a fair bit for work. I'd highly recommend it. The time and hassle it saves at the airport is well worth it. Good to know. And did you notice any other factors that contributed to the smooth security process? Yes, actually. 
The airport also had these new automated screening lanes, which really sped things up. Ooh, I've heard about those. How do they work exactly? Well, they have these conveyor belts that allow multiple passengers to load their items simultaneously. Ah, uh, I see, so it creates more of an assembly line approach. Sounds very efficient. Exactly. And the trays are larger, so you can fit more stuff in them too. That's really smart. Minimizing the bottlenecks makes a big difference. Absolutely. Between the pre-check and the automated lanes, I was through security in no time. That's fantastic. I'll have to keep those tips in mind for my next trip. Anything to make airport security less of a headache. Definitely. It's all about being proactive and taking advantage of the available technology. Lesson 3. Predictions for the future. Howdy. I was reading an interesting article about predictions for the next few decades. Care to discuss? Absolutely, I'd love to hear what it said. What kind of predictions were they making? Well, the article suggested that during the next 30 years, there would be many violent revolutions in Europe and a second major war that would be even more devastating than the first. Wow, that's quite a bold prediction. Do they provide any reasoning or evidence to support those claims? They cited a number of factors, like growing social and economic unrest, the rise of nationalist movements, and increasing global tensions. Hmm, I can see how those could potentially lead to more conflict, but it also seems like a pretty dire outlook. I know, right? I'm not sure I buy into the whole second major war prediction. That feels a bit sensationalized. Definitely. I mean, we've certainly learned from the mistakes of the past, surely the world wouldn't allow something like that to happen again, right? One would hope. Although, the article did point out that similar warnings were given before the First World War and people didn't take them seriously. That's a fair point. I suppose we can't just dismiss these kinds of predictions, even if they sound extreme. Exactly. We should probably keep an eye on the situation and see how things unfold over the next few years. Agreed. It's important to stay informed, but not to panic. Moderation and critical thinking are key. Well said. I'm glad we could discuss this in a level-headed way. It's easy for these kinds of predictions to stir up a lot of fear and anxiety. Definitely. I appreciate you bringing this to my attention, it's an important topic to consider, even if the specifics are up for debate. Absolutely. Any time. Let me know if you come across any other interesting insights on the future. I'm always eager to learn more. Will do. All right, I should probably get going. Lots to do before the day is out. Sounds good. Catch you later. Lesson 4, Efficient Approach
I hear what you're saying, but I think our approach will yield more efficient results. Hmm, I'm not sure I follow. Can you elaborate on that? Absolutely. I believe if we streamline the process, we'll be able to maximize our output. Okay, I'm intrigued. What did you have in mind? Well, I've been analyzing the data, and I think there are a few key areas we can optimize. I'm listening. What sort of changes did you have in mind? For starters, I think we can consolidate a few of these steps to save time. That's an interesting idea. What other efficiencies did you have in mind? Well, I also think we could leverage some more advanced tools to automate certain tasks. Automation, huh? That could definitely help us work smarter, not harder. Exactly. I think if we implement these changes, we'll see a significant boost in productivity. Hmm, you make a compelling case. I'm curious to hear more about the specifics. Absolutely. Let me walk you through the details of my proposed workflow adjustments. Please do. I'm eager to understand how this could positively impact our efficiency. Fantastic. I believe these modifications will streamline our process and yield better results. Lesson 5, The Benefits of Automated Security Lanes Joanna, I was just reading about those new automated security lanes at airports. Ah uh, yes, I've heard of those. They sound pretty interesting. What did you learn? Well, from what I gather, they're designed to really streamline the whole security process. That's great, anything that can make getting through security quicker is a huge plus. Definitely. Apparently, they allow multiple passengers to load their items simultaneously. Whoa, that's a game changer. The bottlenecks at security are always such a hassle. Exactly. And the trays are larger too, so you can fit more stuff in them. Wow, that's really smart. Maximizing the efficiency at every step. Totally. And from what I understand, the lanes are also equipped with some cool tech. Such as? I'm curious to hear more about the tech behind these automated lanes. Well, they have these advanced x-ray machines that can screen bags faster and more thoroughly. Ah, uh, I see. Leveraging the latest scanning technology. That must make a big difference. For sure. And the best part is, you don't have to take out all your electronics and liquids. No way, that's awesome. That's always such a pain, having to unpack and repack everything. Exactly. The automated lanes just make the whole security experience so much smoother. That's really good to know. I've got a few trips coming up, so I'll have to look into using those lanes. I'd highly recommend it. I think you'll be really impressed by how much time they save. 
Great, thanks for the tip. Anything to avoid that dreaded airport security hassle. Absolutely. It's a total game changer, in my opinion. Lesson 6 The Joys of Homemade Pasta. Hey Anna, have you ever tried making pasta from scratch? No, I haven't, but I've always wanted to learn. I love a good pasta dish. It's really not as hard as it may seem. I started making it at home a while back. Oh really? What made you decide to try your hand at homemade pasta? Well, I got tired of store-bought pasta, to be honest. The texture just never seemed right. I can imagine. There's something special about freshly made pasta, isn't there? Definitely. And it's surprisingly easy once you get the hang of it. What's the process like? I'm really curious to hear more about it. It's basically just flour, eggs, and a little bit of water. You mix it all together and knead it. Ah, uh, I see. So it's a pretty simple dough to make. No crazy ingredients or anything. Nope, nothing fancy. Then you just roll it out and cut it into your desired shape. That sounds doable. I always thought homemade pasta would be way more complicated. Nah, it's actually pretty straightforward. The key is getting the dough consistency right. Good to know. And what about the actual cooking process? Is that tricky too? Not at all. You just toss the fresh pasta into boiling water for a few minutes. Nice, so it's pretty quick to cook as well. I'm definitely intrigued to give it a try. You totally should. It's so rewarding to make your own pasta from scratch. I bet. And I imagine it tastes incredible, straight out of the pot. Oh man, you have no idea. It blows store-bought pasta out of the water. All right, you've sold me on it. I'm going to have to carve out some time to try this. Do it. I guarantee you'll be hooked after your first homemade pasta dish. Lesson 7, Weekend Getaway. Hey Anna, I've been thinking about taking a weekend trip. What do you think? Ooh, a weekend getaway? That sounds so exciting. Where did you have in mind? Well, I was thinking about heading up to the mountains for a bit of a nature escape. The mountains, huh? That could be just the perfect little retreat we need. Exactly. I'm envisioning hiking, camping under the stars, and just unplugging, you know? That sounds absolutely heavenly. I could use a break from the hustle and bustle. Me too. Sometimes we just need to get away from it all and recharge, don't you think? Completely. A little weekend adventure could be just the reset we're craving. Definitely. So what do you say, want to join me on a mountain getaway? 
Absolutely. I'm in. When were you thinking of going? How about this weekend? I was hoping we could hit the road first thing Friday. This weekend? Perfect. That doesn't give us much time to plan, but I'm so excited. Awesome. I'll start looking into some cabin rentals and hiking trails right away. Sounds good. I can't wait to disconnect and reconnect with nature and with you. Me neither. This is going to be the perfect little escape. I can't wait. Lesson 8, Taking Flight Hey Anna, I'm so excited about our weekend trip to the mountains. Me too. I've been daydreaming about it all day. Have you started planning the trip? Absolutely. I've already begun searching for the best flight options. Wonderful. I'm sure you'll find us some great deals. When are you thinking of booking? Well, I was hoping to grab tickets for this Friday, if possible. That way we can get an early start. Friday, huh? That works perfectly for me. I can't wait to get out of the city for a bit. Same here. A little mountain escape is exactly what we need to recharge. Totally agree. The fresh air and beautiful scenery are going to be so rejuvenating. Absolutely. And I can't wait to do some hiking and take in the stunning views. Me neither. I'm already picturing us sitting around a campfire, roasting marshmallows. Boo, that sounds heavenly. And maybe we can even do a little stargazing too. Oh, yes. Stargazing under the clear mountain sky, that's the dream. It really is. I'm getting excited just thinking about it. This trip is going to be amazing. I have no doubt about that. I'll start packing my bags as soon as we have the flights booked. Sounds good. I'll forward you the itinerary as soon as I've got everything squared away. Wonderful. I can't wait. This is going to be the perfect little weekend getaway. You got that right. I'm so glad we're doing this. It's going to be a blast. Lesson 9, Caring Conversation Morning. I noticed you've seemed a bit stressed lately. Everything okay? Morning, John. Ah, uh, you know, just a lot going on at work. It's been quite hectic. I can imagine. Those deadlines and projects can really take a toll, huh? Definitely. It's been a lot to juggle, that's for sure. I feel like I'm constantly on the go. It's natural to feel that way when you've got a lot on your plate. Don't forget to take care of yourself too. You're right, I really need to make sure I'm giving myself a break. It's easy to get so caught up in work. Absolutely. 
Even small things like taking a walk or reading a book can make a big difference. That's a great reminder. I'll have to make sure I schedule in some self-care time this week. Wonderful. You deserve it. You work so hard, you need to recharge. Thank you, John. It really does mean a lot to have your support and encouragement. Of course, that's what friends are for. I'm always here if you need to vent or just take a breather. I appreciate that more than you know. It's so nice to have someone to lean on. Any time. We all need that sometimes. Don't hesitate to reach out, okay? I won't, I promise. And the same goes for you, you know. We've got to look out for each other. Absolutely. It's a deal. Now, how about we plan a fun activity to get your mind off work for a bit? Ooh, I like the sound of that. What did you have in mind? Well, I was thinking a nice hike or maybe a trip to the museum. Something relaxing. Either of those sound perfect. I could definitely use a little mental reset. Great, then it's a plan. I'll take care of the details and let you know. Wonderful, thank you John. I really appreciate you looking out for me. Of course, that's what friends are for. I'm glad I could be there for you. Lesson 10, Fitness Buddies Morning. I couldn't help but notice you've been hitting the gym a lot lately. Morning, John. Yeah, I've been really focused on my fitness routine lately. That's great to hear. Are you following a specific program or just winging it? I'm actually following a program designed by a personal trainer. It's been really helpful. Nice, a personal trainer can make a big difference. What kind of program are you doing? It's a mix of strength training and cardio. I've been trying to really challenge myself. Awesome, that sounds like a well-rounded approach. I've been wanting to get back into a fitness routine myself. You should definitely give it a try. Having a plan makes it so much easier to stay motivated. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe we could even work out together sometime? I'd love that. It would be great to have a workout buddy to keep each other accountable. Definitely, we could push each other and make it more fun too. Totally, plus it's always nice to have someone to chat with between sets. Ha, huh, exactly. Fitness is important, but it should be enjoyable too. Exactly. So, when do you want to hit the gym together? How about this weekend? I'm free on Saturday afternoon. Perfect, let's do it. I'll send you the details of the program I've been following. Sounds good, I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be great.
Me too. This is going to be the start of a beautiful fitness friendship. Couldn't agree more. All right, I'll see you this weekend, partner. Lesson 11, Hiking Adventure. Hey Anna, have you ever been to a national park before? No, I haven't actually. I've always wanted to go explore one though. Well, I have the perfect idea. How about we plan a hiking trip to a national park this weekend? That sounds amazing. I'd love to experience the stunning landscapes of a national park. Awesome, I was thinking we could check out Yosemite National Park. It's supposed to be breathtaking. Yosemite? I've heard it's one of the most beautiful parks in the country. I'm so in. Great, I'll start looking into hiking trails and campsites. Any preference on the difficulty level? Hmm, maybe something moderate to start. I want a good challenge, but not to the point of exhaustion. Sounds good. I'll find us a nice day hike that showcases the best views. Sound good? Definitely. I can't wait to immerse myself in nature and get some fresh air. Me neither. It'll be the perfect reset from the hustle and bustle of the city. Absolutely. I'm already feeling more relaxed just thinking about it. Same here. This is going to be an awesome adventure, I can just feel it. I agree. We're going to make so many great memories. For sure. I'm really looking forward to it. This is going to be epic. Me too, John. I can't wait to explore Yosemite with you. All right, let's do this. I'll send you all the details as soon as I've got them finalized. Sounds good, I'll be ready. This is going to be the highlight of my weekend, for sure. Awesome, I feel the same way. It's going to be an unforgettable experience. Lesson 12, Overcoming Failure Hey Anna, can I ask you something? Sure, what's up? Have you ever experienced a big failure in your life that ended up helping you grow? Hmm, that's a really interesting question. I'd say yes, definitely. Oh really? I'd love to hear more about it if you're comfortable sharing. Well, there was this one time in college when I completely bombed an important exam. I was devastated. Ouch, that must have been tough. What happened after that? At first, I was really down on myself. I thought I had blown my chances of graduating on time. I can imagine. So how did you turn it around? Well, I realized I needed to take a step back and reevaluate my study habits and approach. That's a really mature way to handle it. A lot of people would have just given up. Exactly. 
Instead of dwelling on the failure, I used it as motivation to do better. I started planning my time better and seeking out extra help. That's awesome. And it clearly paid off, since you graduated on time, right? Absolutely. In the end, that failure ended up being one of the most valuable learning experiences of my college career. Wow, that's a really inspiring story. I'm glad you were able to turn it around like that. Me too. I think failures, as painful as they are in the moment, can be such powerful opportunities for growth. I couldn't agree more. Do you have any advice for someone who might be going through a similar situation? I'd say the most important thing is to not be too hard on yourself. Acknowledge the failure, but don't let it define you. That's great advice. And then use it as motivation to improve, like you did. Exactly. Focus on what you can learn and how you can become better because of it. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing your story. It's really encouraging to hear. I'm glad I could help, John. Remember, failures are just stepping stones to future success. I'll definitely keep that in mind. Thanks again, this has been a great conversation. Anytime. I'm always happy to chat about overcoming challenges. It's such an important life skill. For sure. All right, I'm feeling inspired. Time to go tackle my next big goal. Lesson 13, Navigating Airport Security. Morning. I've got a quick question for you. Hello, John. Sure, what's on your mind? Have you ever had any issues with airport security and the 311 rule? Oh, the 311 rule. I definitely have a few stories about that. Really? Do tell. I'm always nervous about making sure I have everything packed properly. Well, there was this one time I forgot to take my shampoo out of my carry-on. You can imagine how that went down. Avo, uh, oh, I can only imagine. Did they confiscate it? Yep, they sure did. I was so annoyed at myself for forgetting. That's the worst. Do they actually enforce that rule strictly? Absolutely. They don't mess around when it comes to the 311 rule. Good to know. How much can you actually carry on in terms of liquids, anyway? The limit is 3.4 ounces, or 100 milliliters per container. And it all has to fit in a one-quart bag. Wow, that's not a ton of space. No wonder it's so easy to mess that up. Tell me about it. I try to be really diligent about it now, but it's easy to forget sometimes. I bet. So what's the best way to make sure you have everything packed properly? I always double check my bag before I leave for the airport. And I keep all my liquids in one easily accessible bag. 
Ah, that's a great tip. I'll have to remember that one. Definitely. And if you're ever unsure, you can always ask the TSA agents. They're usually pretty helpful. Good to know. I really appreciate you sharing your airport security wisdom. Happy to help, John. Safe travels, and don't forget those liquids. Will do. Thanks again, this was super informative. Lesson 14, Resolving Conflicts with Ease. Hey Anna, can I get your advice on something? Absolutely, John. What's going on? Well, I've been having some issues with a coworker, and I'm not sure how to handle it. Oh, dealing with conflicts at work can be tricky. What's the situation? We've been butting heads over a project, and it's starting to affect the whole team. I see. Workplace conflicts can be really tough to navigate. Exactly. I want to find a way to resolve this, but I'm not sure where to start. Well, the key is to approach it in a constructive way. Have you tried talking to your coworker directly? I have, but it usually just ends up in an argument. Hmm, I see. Well, the first step is to try to understand their perspective. You mean, like, really listen to where they're coming from? Precisely. Actively listening and trying to empathize can go a long way. That makes sense. But what if they don't seem open to that? Then you may need to involve a neutral third party, like a manager or HR. Ah, okay. I wasn't sure if that was the right move or not. It can be, especially if the conflict is impacting the team's productivity. That's a good point. I definitely don't want this to spiral out of control. Exactly. The key is addressing it early and finding a mutually agreeable solution. Okay, I think I've got a better handle on this now. Thanks. Anytime, John. Let me know if you need any other advice on resolving workplace conflicts. Will do. I appreciate you taking the time to walk me through this. Of course. I'm happy I could help. Wishing you the best in getting this sorted out. Me too. All right, I'm off to have a chat with my coworker. Wish me luck. Lesson 15 Family Visits and Cherished Memories. Morning. I heard you visited your grandparents recently. How was it? Oh, it was wonderful, John. I spent a full week with them, and it was such a special time. That's great to hear. I'm sure they were thrilled to have you stay for so long. Definitely. We had such a lovely time together, catching up and reminiscing. That's so nice. What did you all get up to during your visit? 
well, we did all the usual activities, helped around the house, went for walks, and cooked some of my grandma's famous recipes. Ah, the classic grandparent activities. I bet those home-cooked meals were amazing. They were. It was so comforting and nostalgic. And we also spent a lot of time just talking and laughing. That sounds so wonderful. I'm glad you were able to have that quality time with them. Me too. It's always so rejuvenating to be around my grandparents. They have a way of making me feel at peace. I can imagine. Having that kind of unconditional love and support is so special. Absolutely. It's a reminder to cherish the time we have with our loved ones. Definitely. Did you happen to take any photos during your visit? Oh yes, plenty. I'll have to show you some of the best ones. I'd love to see them. Sounds like it was an amazing trip. It really was. I'm so grateful I could spend that time with my grandparents. That's wonderful. I'm happy you had such a meaningful visit. Thank you, John. It's always good to reconnect with family, isn't it? Absolutely. Family is so important, and those moments together are so precious. Couldn't agree more. I'm already looking forward to my next visit. I bet. Well, I'm glad you had such a lovely time. Thanks for sharing the details with me. Lesson 16, A Shared Love of Hiking Morning Anna, have you decided where you want to go hiking this weekend? Hey John, I was actually thinking about that new trail we've been meaning to try. Oh yes, the one in the nature preserve just outside of town, right? Exactly. I've heard it's absolutely beautiful this time of year. Same here, I've been wanting to check it out. I'm so glad we both enjoy going there. Me too, it's such a great way for us to get outside and stay active. Definitely. And the fresh air and scenery are so inspiring, don't you think? Absolutely. I always feel so refreshed and rejuvenated after a good hike. Totally agree. It's the perfect antidote to the stresses of everyday life. Couldn't have said it better myself. So shall we plan to go on Saturday? Saturday works perfectly for me. Shall we plan to meet up around 10 a.m.? Sounds good to me. I'll pack a nice little picnic lunch for us too. Oh yes, that's a fantastic idea. We can enjoy it at the top of the trail. Exactly. It'll be the perfect way to recharge and take in the views. I can't wait. This is going to be such a wonderful adventure. Same here, I'm really looking forward to it. It's been too long since our last hike. 
I agree, it'll be great to get back out there. Nature is so restorative, don't you think? Absolutely. It has a way of calming the mind and rejuvenating the soul. Well said. I'm glad we both appreciate the importance of spending time outdoors. Me too, it's one of the things I really enjoy doing with you. Likewise. This is going to be a fantastic weekend hike. Lesson 17, Shared Experiences. Hey, I heard you finished that book you've been reading. How'd you like it? Oh, Tom's Midnight Garden? I loved it. Such a magical story, don't you think? I haven't read it, actually. What's it about? Well, it's about a young boy named Tom who gets sent to stay with his uncle and aunt while his brother is sick. And he discovers this secret garden that only he can access at midnight. Wow, that does sound pretty magical. I'll have to add it to my reading list. You definitely should. The way the author describes the garden is just so whimsical and captivating. I bet. I'm always on the lookout for books that can really transport me to another world, you know? Totally. Reading is such an immersive experience. Speaking of which, I was really sad when the book ended. Oh, really? What happened at the end? Well, without giving too much away, let's just say it has a bittersweet conclusion. I won't ruin it for you, but I may have shed a tear or two. Ah, man. I hate when a good book makes you emotional like that. It's a sign of a really powerful story, though. Exactly. The author just did such an amazing job of making you feel for the characters. I was so invested in their journey. I can imagine. Books that can evoke that kind of emotional response are the best, in my opinion. Couldn't agree more. Have you had any books like that, where you just got so swept up in the story? Hmm, let me think. Oh, I know. When my mom and I read The Velveteen Rabbit together when I was a kid, we both ended up in tears by the end. Ah, that's so sweet. The Velveteen Rabbit is such a classic. I can see how that one would really tug at the heartstrings. Yeah, it's just such a beautifully written exploration of love and loss. I still get a little choked up thinking about it. I'm not surprised. Books that tap into those universal human experiences can be so powerful, don't you think? Absolutely. There's just something about getting lost in a story and connecting with the characters on an emotional level.